actually, it's been a long time coming. We've talked so much about gas prices here on the show because, uh, you know, they've got out of control and they're still very high. But um, even higher and not uh, seeing any relief at all is the price of diesel. Right now, your average Canadian price for a liter of diesel, this is the average, is $2.18 a liter. Um, one year ago, it was $1.43. So it's a huge increase. It's very, very high. Um, and uh, it has a lot to do with inventories, I think. But let's get an expert on to, to walk us through what's happened. And we're going to chat with, chat with Dan McTagg once again, president of Canadians for Affordable Energy. Dan, thanks for joining us. Appreciate it. Oh, good to be here. Good morning, uh, Shane. So from my understanding here, a lot of this is wrapped up in U.S. inventories of diesel. Is that the overriding factor here? It is, uh, but what happens in the United States has a direct relationship uh, to the price that we pay here in Canada. Uh, you know, and there are three markets, you and I have talked about this before, that affect uh, all of Canada's prices. Uh, the New York, Chicago, and uh, uh, Pacific Northwest markets out of Oregon. And so those three uh, reflect the supply and demand fundamentals in the United States, and they in turn, uh, you know, in, in effect, the price that we pay for all of our fuels. And by the way, it's, I think it's pretty true for almost all commodities, regardless yeah. of where you are. The U.S. market is important. So what's going on with the U.S. inventories? I, I, I read they were down there at their lowest level since 2008. That's a long time. What's going on? Yeah, well, we're looking at a, uh, a long, <laughs> a story that has been long coming. Uh, in Hang on, Dan, you're breaking up a little. I'm going to throw you up on hold and see if see if Sarah can't get that line worked out. We lost Dan for a second there. I, I want to stick with this, though. But, yeah, uh, yeah, Canadian inventory of or, you know, supplies of diesel, fairly stable, haven't changed all that much. However, for some reason, um, when we take a look at the United States, their levels of diesel inventories are the lowest they have been um, since 2008. Let's see if we got Dan, uh, see if we got that line cleared up. Dan, sorry, you were breaking up for a bit there. Yeah, apologies. Well, that's, uh, I guess I won't be using Fido anymore. Listen, uh, <laughs> <laughs> there's a plug. Uh, yeah, 20% below the past five year average. And the problem is very acute on the U.S. East and Canadian East Coast. Okay. That's where we use a lot of other fuels, not just diesel, but home heating fuel, fuel of uh, furnace oil is still used very common in places like that in and around Boston. And so, uh, you know, when you've got diesel used for jet fuel, diesel used for uh, stove oil, furnace oil, and uh, even urea used for fertilizer, you can see where uh, this is a fuel that gets no respect and uh, unfortunately is a very short supply. Um, and, you know, the thing about it is diesel is, it, that affects all of us, right? I mean, the, the price of gasoline is the price of gasoline, but the price of diesel, even if you, even if you don't drive, it's going to cost you more when you go to the grocery, when you go anywhere because of trucking, right? Because of trucking, uh, because it's uh, rail, uh, you know, it's used for farmers to pull it out of the fields. It's uh, it's part of the processing, as I mentioned, urea for even uh, things like, for instance, uh, fertilizer. But here's the thing. The U.S. and to a lesser extent Canada has lost about 20 refineries in the past three or four years. So now what? Think about that. They're not coming back. These are refineries that have closed down, are about to close down. And the reasons for that are various. Obviously, COVID didn't help. But there's no money in it. You say, well, they're making record profits, but they're being told do not reinvest in, in refineries. And by the way, who's going to reinvest in a refinery where you're being told by governments in the United States and in Canada that in 10 years there'll be no more internal combustion engines? By the way, good luck with that. Mm -hmm. But aside, no one is going to take the risk of committing billions of dollars to upgrade some of these refineries or reopen them when you know full well the governments are determined to kill them. No, yeah, we've heard that criticism before. It makes perfect sense. I mean, if you're running the business, you got to be aware of of what's on the horizon. Where does, you know, it's a global commodity, as you said. Where yeah. does the whole situation overseas fit into this in terms of Russia, Ukraine? We know that's a big energy factor. Yeah, it does. They're using diesel as an alternative to natural gas. They know they can no longer get. But uh, Shay, here's the big kicker. And by the way, diesel goes up 10 cents a liter wholesale. I tweeted that this morning. I think I got two people that took interest in all of Manitoba, Saskatchewan, Alberta, and BC. But I was like about an hour ago. Uh, here's the thing. Weather is going to start to get really cold. It's already started where you are, but uh, in places where I am, I'm looking out the window here today, enjoying 22, 23 degree weather. That's unusual for the beginning of November. When temperatures begin to drop and the people out here turn up their thermostats, more than just what happens in Europe, you're going to see a, a significant run on diesel such that we're going to see 
I would say from the U.S. Midwest all the way back to the Atlantic coast and from probably Quebec into the Maritimes rationing uh, because the prices, if you think there's, there's something now, you mentioned 218, uh, it's about 222 here in Ontario. Uh, it's about 245, 260 in, uh, in the Maritimes. That's going to $3 a litre. It's going to cripple a lot of people. And more importantly, it's going to lead to uh, significant serious shortages and drive up the cost of propane, drive up the cost of natural gas, which are alternatives. $3. Is what you're looking at in Eastern Canada? Yeah. This uh, is there any relief in sight? Like you say, if you're talking about refineries coming offline, is there any way that this gets better, Dan? The crude to rack spreads uh, for diesel right now is uh, about a buck a liter. Uh, it means that oil will start to go up in price, which in turn will push prices. No, I don't see this getting better uh, until the war on refineries and on fossil fuels ends. And it's not going to, at least in Canada, from the uh, from what we're hearing from our prime minister and his uh, partner in crime, <laughs> the NDP. They want to go full. Uh, they want to go full bore on uh, more climate policies, which are going to have the effect of driving up prices. We also have, of course, as you know, the clean fuel standard coming on July uh, 2023. Before that, an increase in the carbon taxes. These guys are not letting off their, their foot on the accelerator, and uh, that means that uh, we're headed for a collision. Uh, an inflationary one in which uh, affordability is undermined and which uh, a lot of people are going to have to choose between, and you've heard it before, it's trite, but it's true, between heating and uh, and eating. Well, yeah, and we've definitely seen massive surges in food banks and everything. It's already happening, Dan. Uh, yes, just before I let you get out of here, what about the price of gas? It's come down. We've seen some relief there. What are you anticipating for the next, you know, little while when it comes to uh, heading to the gas station? Diesel will be up about 30 to 40 cents a liter, guys. We get it much colder, and I think half of that will be gasoline. The refineries make both. They'll try to emphasize diesel, but it'll bring gasoline for the for the ride. So, the buck sixty three you're seeing in uh, Calgary, the buck fifty nine you're seeing in Edmonton, add another twenty to thirty cents uh, as we head towards uh, uh, this uh, very cold weather period. So we could see prices move much closer to a dollar eighty, even with uh, or without the uh, provincial government's help on uh, gas taxes. All right. Uh, not a lot of good news today. <laughs> I don't think I was Never expecting is, it. Never is. <laughs> I wish I was doing something else. Okay. Thanks, Dan. I appreciate your time.